Hi, this is Phil Bedford and welcome to the Rebel Network. Hi and welcome back and uh, we're here with Amal Loring. Uh, Amal works with a company called MBD and they're experts in cultural diversity. Um, Amal, we've uh, been speaking over a couple of weeks now and you've, given, you've shared some fantastic tips and tools. Um, what I wanted to do is just go a little bit general about um, just cultural mess-ups, really, when people don't even know they're doing it. Um, and I was just thinking about it the other day when uh, we were actually trying to arrange for a, a young lady to attend one of our programmes. And basically she came to us and said, look, sorry, I can't attend this week, I need to reschedule her. And my PA replied to her, oh, that's a shame. No problem at all. Let us know when you can attend and we'll, we'll be in touch. And she came back to us and was completely insulted about the way we'd spoken to her. Now, in England, that means absolutely nothing. That's a lovely phrase. But it turns out the word shame had upset her. Yes. So my question is to you is, particularly in multicultural societies, you know, as we're traveling around the world, how can we prevent these slip-ups? Is there ways of noticing it, ways to prevent it? And if we've done it, how do we apologize and, and move a relationship forward? Good question. Um, going back to the reference that you said, it would be these just three little word, letters on the end, which would be full, so shameful that you can't come. So that would have been the, the, the uh, interpretation. And of course, we are going to, to uh, mess up. That's why we've got people like me around uh, to uh, reduce that uh, possibility. But what I would say is when you move into a new environment, whether it's UAE uh, or you know, from one nationality to another, become a cultural learner rather than what's called a cultural critic. And a cultural critic is somebody who says, well, we don't do that in my country, or we don't do that, you know, that here. Well, you aren't in your country, you're in a, a guest in a host country. So become that cultural learner. Uh, listen out for some of those uh, cues. Listen to the language that other people uh, use, or people's facial expression. And if you do mess up, one of the uh, smartest ways is really to say, with sincerity, I apologise for X, it wasn't my intention, because particularly in many countries, many religions, uh, your uh, actions are judged by your intentions. So become that cultural learner, uh, re read local information, uh, look at how other people respond, and try and use neutral languages, a uh, neutral language rather. Humour is something that doesn't uh, cross cultures, and what we find, uh, which might be funny in British culture, goes down like a lead balloon, as they say, in other cultures. So be very cautious about making uh, jokes, because it, it could be a joke at that person's expense. And so therefore, just keep your language neutral. Don't make any references uh, to things that could be misinterpreted. It's very interesting how you say that, actually. You, a lot of people would assume that the British culture and the American culture are quite similar. Um, but I think... Uh, Anyone that's one of those nationalities knows we're actually miles apart. And one of the things we do in, in the UK is when you're uh, when you like somebody, you obviously sarcastic and make fun of them. And that means I really like you because I'm comfortable enough to do that. But I understand that in the US they call those zingers, and it's completely frowned on. Um, and I remember I was just messing around with an Australian friend of mine, and we were zinging each other. And all the Americans were like, "Oh my gosh, so you don't like each other? Yeah. Why?" And we just. <laughs> We didn't get it. So, I mean, even in cultures that are apparently similar, you get this as well. It's uh, incredible. Yes. And a, a rule of thumb, if you look, say, at the Arab culture, the GCC culture, where we're uh, living and working successfully, um, it's not to poke fun at somebody uh, from both a religious and cultural point of view. Uh, make uh, reference to them. It would make them feel bad in uh, any way. The slapstick type of humour doesn't go down well. Somebody falls over a banana skin where you know, everybody laughs. No, this doesn't go down well. So really, when it comes to humour, park it or keep it within your own uh, culture until you establish and understand that other cult cultures, uh, cultural sensitivities towards uh, humour. Well, some fantastic tips there. Um, if anyone wants to know more about culture and how they can start to use it for, for good rather than tripping up all the time, uh, Amal will be putting your details obviously underneath um, all of the programmes. So check out what she does. Um, that's this week's show. Rebel Networking.